I live um, directly across the street from a short-term rental and it the problems have ranged from all-night parties of course um, to no parking um, to uh, bear pong at three in the morning one young lady who was really drunk in the yard saying you know, this is New Orleans, what do you expect? We thought we could do this, we could party all night. I just kind of grin and bear it and um, get through the night. And when they, you know, when they leave three days later, I know that we're gonna have a couple, three or four days of quiet until the next weekend when the next group arrives. The biggest impact that it's had on me is that it's destroyed my peace of mind um, in my own home. You know, that's kind of what we all strive for is to have some sense of comfort and peace of mind and um, I know that every weekend I won't have a, any peace of mind at all so I try to like ignore them but um, but deep down inside you can't and then when you multiply that times four or five homes on one block then it just becomes unbearable. We have to take a look at the difference between healthy and unhealthy communities. Healthy communities have that sense of togetherness. They have a common purpose. Even if they only see each other every now and then, residents of a healthy community have that sense of our or my. This is my neighborhood. This is my community. If people just come and go without any emotional investment in the community, that is very, very bad for the community and could even cause the demise of that community. Not long ago, I, uh, my husband and I visited uh, a restaurant in New Orleans uh, near um, the Museum of uh, Art. And it was just a very pleasant experience because the talk all around this outdoor area was about people living in the neighborhood and being excited about it and being happy to be there. It was very welcoming. Everything was very personal. It was like people actually cared that we had chosen that restaurant and cared that we had visited that neighborhood. And neighborhoods exude a personality. And the personality is either welcome or keep out. And neighborhoods that have become very commercial or very impersonal have that sense of get out, of you are not welcome here. Many people drive here from Alabama, Texas, Mississippi. We see plates from all over the country parking right in front of our house. And um, I can no longer park in front of my house and I have to park two or three blocks away whenever all of the visitors are here because many of them do drive and park and they don't have to move the car again um, until they leave and um, because they can walk into the quarter and it's awesome you can be drunk and not drive and and just park your car and, and there's no ticketing and it's not residential parking so you can keep your car there for a week two weeks a month we've had cars out there for three months it's a foregone conclusion that there's no more parking it also raises the other issue of the crime because if I have to park um, two or three blocks away, um, then I have to walk kind of a gauntlet, like that's what we call it, like um, from wherever I parked to my house and um, without getting robbed. And um, given the, the, that the crime has never gone away, uh, it's actually increased because of the targets that are here now with the visitors. The, the, the hotels bring more visitors who are kind of like walking around not knowing where they are and so the criminals know that and um, they prey on them. So um, so it's, it's, also, it's made us more of a target neighborhood for criminals as well. I'm not opposed to new people joining a neighborhood. But the word is joining. When new people come into a neighborhood just to stay for a day or two or a week or two, that sense is lost. And one of the problems that short-term rentals has is that sense of 
not being ego involved, not being able to have a sense of joining with the neighborhood. I mean, you can see that in all the motels. You know, people, they rent a motel for the night. They, they don't intend to contribute anything to that area other than money, okay? But if people come for six months, that works. If they come for six days, it's disruptive. No, I haven't thought about contact, contacting VRBO to complain, um, you know, because again, I, I, I'm feeling like the, the group that can protect me is the group that I pay my taxes to which is the city of New Orleans and the elected officials of New Orleans. That's who needs to protect the homeowners and the residences of this city. And to this date, they have done actually the opposite. They have um, the city planning commission, the city council, and the mayor's office has actually turned a blind eye to the illegality of many of these short-term rentals in the city and um, and have actually embraced it you know the mayor's proposal to embrace whole house rentals is will do irreparable damage to the city I, you know I think me as just a regular homeowner and a citizen taxpayer I, I can't go fight VRBO or Airbnb or Flipkey or HomeShare. Those are multinational corporations with valuation in the billions. The person who has to fight that is my elected official. That's how I really believe. And thus far, they haven't shown any indication that they want to fight on our behalf. And I think that's the that's what angers me the most, and that's what saddens me the most as well. Um, that as a citizen, as a taxpayer, I don't have any representation. My is a very important pronoun. When we can say, this is my home, when this is my community, this is my street, that sense of ownership propels people to do really remarkable things. If one is not able to feel that sense of ownership, nothing significant happens. I, I feel like the city hasn't done the due diligence of, of having a good conversation about what does this mean for the entire master plan of the city? You know, are we all in agreement that all neighborhoods need to become tourist zones um, and I don't ever recall that being a part of that whole master plan process that everyone really worked so hard on and now that's been just thrown to the wayside and I don't understand that I really don't I wish someone can explain it to me in terms of my peace of mind being gone um, I have to learn how to uh, ignore it ignore the the rental across the street and the rage rave that goes on that night and then try to go to sleep and then wake up the next day and be happy. That's so hard to do every single day. Now we have to make a decision based on what our neighbor did in his investment and his commercialization of his home. So that's kind of not a great place to sit when you're just trying to live a, a peaceful life.